campers, I am Lester. No, I am not a city, that's my name. <laughs> if you're enjoying the music that you're hearing, that's good, because uh, I was the one that made it. Check out my music on SoundCloud, if you feel like it. Shameless plug over, without further delay, I'm here at gunpoint to introduce this week's Benny Shakes Things Up. Without further ado, here's Benny. Hey, you alright? You alright, mate? Long time. It's been a long I time. Know. It? It's season three, episode one. It is very exciting. Yeah. We've done the book. Well, we haven't done the book because it's not coming out till next year. Oh, it's exciting though, isn't yeah. it? But yeah. and this is pre-recorded, isn't it? So this is a new yeah. format. I'm quite excited about this. So please like, share, subscribe, and if you're feeling flush, you can always buy our guest a pint or two. Yes. And if you're really flush, you can always pay five quid and it goes straight to the artist. Yes, it so, does. Yes. Because so, you make, Benny, you make far too much money from comedy, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you're oh, like a millionaire, yes. aren't you? <laughs> oh, yes. All this driving. Benny yeah. shakes, it's, it's, you know, it's cool because you're shaking so yeah. much money around, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got two pairs of socks on, my long johns on, two jumpers on. But yeah, I make quite a lot of money. <laughs> um, so tonight's pre recorded episode um, really is close to home for both of us isn't it yes uh, it is because we are celebrating the trans community um tomorrow is trans trans end of remembrance day um, where we remember all those people who have lost their l lives because they didn't feel accepted in the world, which I was reading uh, a lot about it today. And, yeah... It broke yeah. my heart. It really did. Um, so why does it mean a lot to you, Mark, why I shut this door? Well, my uh, best friend of about 18 years, um, in the last two years, um, has sort of come out as uh, transgender, and her journey has been absolutely amazing. And I feel very privileged to to have been part of that journey. Uh, she's had a she's had a lot of things to battle with, though, and a lot of the trans community do. And I think this is why this is such an important podcast. And I'm really glad we're doing this. We're opening season three, talking about this. It's something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. But why is it close to your heart, Benny? Well. Um... Like, we started this back in, is it two years ago or nine One year ago. months ago, something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, we got to know a lot of, um, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, is so it I... that they... We got to lot of, no, uh, we, got to really. lot of, we got to know a lot of people from the LGBTQ yeah, community. And a lot of trans um, community, which we've got fantastic guests. But also now I'm in love 
with your best friend. Hello. Um, who's trans, so, yeah. It's my lovely been, little connection there, all three of us. It's, it's, it's yeah. been, it's, been a, it's, it's actually yeah. really... Look, you share everything on one bed. You're not sharing my bed, all right? <laughs> I mean, she's like a sister to me, so yeah. absolutely no way is that happening. <laughs> I, I think it's a perfect um, season three, episode one to do. So absolutely. we have got Donna Land, is it Land? Donna Landy. Landy. Um, we met her over lockdown doing Zooms, but she's been all over the country. I do believe she did an uh, Edinburgh show. I could yep. be wrong. But if she did. I tell you what, instead of me guessing, why don't I get it wrong? Up. So, welcome, Donna. Hi, Hi Donna. Donna. Hello, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. He's all right. Yeah, I'm not bad. I just have to put up with Benny, that's all. <laughs> then we all, darling. <laughs> Yeah. I know. <laughs> yes, for once, for once, someone starts to me. So, you know, I love you, Donna. You can come back every week because I always get bullied on this show. So, oh. I'm pleased that you're on my side here. Don't worry, Mark. I'll get you later. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Well, thank you for coming on. Then he shakes things up. Um, the first question we always ask our guests before we get into it is what is your disability? Well, um, I'll tell you in just a second, but I didn't want to let the opportunity pass to say thanks for putting in a plug for people to buy me a pint. I mean, that's always welcome. Yes. Uh, my favourite my favorite pint is um, tequila, so I'm not sure five pounds will cover it, but just putting <laughs> that out there. It in, depends what's you want yeah, a tequila yeah. in, it? <laughs> I tell you what, I'll leave it up there for a bit. How about that? <laughs> you never know. Um, my disability, I don't know. I'm sure that I'm on the, um, the neurodiverse spectrum somewhere, but um, recently, I've had this like really bad pain in the back of my hands um, and I can't really grip things properly, which is quite a problem when you're touring because um, obviously you've got a suitcase and things to carry. And some places, you know, when you're trying to save a bit of money and stay at Airbnbs and they haven't got a lift and you've got to carry stuff upstairs. And I'm suddenly I'm like talking to Airbnb saying I can't stay on the third floor um because i can't get my suitcase up i've got arthritic hands you know i'm suspected arthritis so that, that i'm really starting to get a window in on the um on the world who, of people who do live with disability and what it's like and it's really i want to cry it's just when you to think yeah. what it's like to have to live with that for, for your whole life that's really yeah. something else see i'm used to it so i just yeah. get on with life but We've had quite a few people who have had accidents and, and yeah, they... What just develop they, disabilities as you get yeah. older? Because that happens a lot. Not saying you're old, Donna. I'm not trying to... <laughs> you wouldn't be he, wrong. He's already <laughs> offended you. I've already put my foot in it. So I'm not offended that easily. I'm not offended that easily. Don't worry. The only time I get offended is when you get comedians on stage, you know, with the hack trans jokes about how undateable we are or complaining about, oh, there are so many genders these days. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. really? You need to do that? There, so There's a lot of that. I went to one gig and they were talking about that. And if it wasn't a pro gig, I would have told them where to shove their money. <laughs> I really would. But, but do you know, do you know, it's why I've started calling 
comedians out like that on stage now because I do think it's important for the people who do support the trans community to, to from my point of view, as an ally, to call shit out. That's why I try to incorporate that in my set because I think that's important. Is that something you incorporate in your set? Do you try and call them out on stage? No. You know, the no, what I try and do in, in my material is I try and give people a window into what it is to be trans. Mm. Um, and I play with the common misperceptions, you know, like that uh, people, a lot of people think I'm a man in a dress, um, which I then play with and make fun of. Uh, and it's and it's really a lot of fun or that people are fascinated by my boobs and want to know if they're real you know and if I'm going all the way and then I'm of course play the double entendre on that one so you know there's lots of ways you can play this and it, it's fun because most people have never met someone who's trans um so I'm the first trans person and I, it's been quite a journey to work my material to the stage where you know obviously people who are already on side who are already aware of trans issues they're, they're already in. I mean, Brighton is just a brilliant place for me to play. Yeah, but I, really I cut is. my teeth here in, in North Devon, where it's a very conservative county. There's a lot of Times oh. and Telegraph readers here. So that, that's their kind of point of view. And I've had to do a lot of work on my set to get it round to the point of view where people who come from that background can still relate and still find it funny. And it's been quite a journey, you know, because we have they, this country has got so many different people in it. It really does. And there's so much division and so much hatred and it's so unnecessary. And I think one of the biggest things we can do is try and build bridges across the divides yeah. so that everyone can get on board with stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's, there's a very, very resistant hub in the Conservative Party that really resists anything to do with, you know, anything beyond what, what quote unquote God intended in the Bible about gender as if in nature people that are only born male or female which is so not true you i mean know, you know what as well the, the labor party also very guilty of that there's certain people in the labor party i've seen so i think across the political spectrum from what i've seen there is some it's still very outdated views but yeah i get it it's a shame it's a shame because it does prevent um progress let in you know legal legal things like um making it easier to change gender and providing services in the nhs um which is a pity because there is there's a lot of will to make things easier but there's also a very resistant hub shall we say <laughs> preventing it yeah. and that's a shame it is a shame i mean there shouldn't be this male and female. We're in nature, for God's sake. Nature isn't just black and white. And it's not socially so, constructed. No. Um, but actually, for those that don't know, because I think this is very important, because actually sometimes, because I obviously, as I said before, me and Benny know someone very close to us, who's transgender and when i talk about that on stage i often I, I i now try and describe what it is so that people understand how would you describe what uh being transgender is for those that don't know well it's a bit like being born in the wrong body if you like so my sense of self is feminine so for, for myself i'm a woman but obviously i was assigned male at birth so that makes me transgender and i've got um, you know, but various people do various things with that. I mean, some people leave their body alone and never take hormones and people express it in different ways. But I've been on the journey of taking hormones and I'm hopefully going to get surgeries at some point, which would be that, good. Let's come to my first question. When did you really feel like, actually, I'm in the wrong body? Well, uh, well, I've had kind of moments throughout my whole life, but it really came to like became clear in 2017 when I realized that I felt a sense of discomfort in male clothing that I didn't feel in female clothing. It was really, really strange. Mm -hmm. I just felt that I was upset about something when I was in men's clothing in a way that I wasn't in women's clothing. And it took me two weeks on YouTube trying to work out what this was about. And thankfully, I found some other trans people who had similar experiences and and I worked it out and the penny dropped. Yeah, because it must be hard for um, to say, I know 
some cerebral palsy people who have transitioned from female to male but i don't know anyone who's transitioning from male to female now if i put makeup on myself I will damage my eyes. So, in the don't laugh. I'm being serious. Um, I'm just trying to. I don't know where I'm going, but bear with me. Oh. Yeah. It must be hard for people who are disabled wanting to be female that can't can't put the makeup on all the clothes that must um, be really difficult yeah when you like you said you went on youtube you just take us through how you learn how to do makeup and things like that. Oh, yeah, your, your journey. <laughs> your oh journey. God. That's gonna be... where I was going. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I just, I want to just backtrack slightly if I can, because yeah. I know there's quite a controversy in, it's certainly in Britain, maybe other countries too at the moment, about, you know, there are some people who say that gender or, is defined by sex, like how you, your biology defines your gender. It's a kind of very trans resistant point of view. Um, the weird thing is, though, I think if you did a thought experiment, if you took, say, a man who doesn't believe in that gender is in the mind, that believes that gender is in the body, and you said to them, OK, fine, but if we put you to sleep and gave, like, took your brain out of your body, put it into a woman's body so that you had full body transfer into the body of a woman and you woke up with boobs and a fanny, would you be a woman? And they'd be like, well, no, of course not, because I'd still be me. Right. That's yeah. so then. But, but you just said that it's in the body and now you've got a woman's body so wouldn't that make you a woman well no i think they'd end up in a place of confusion to be honest because they realized the logical fallacy of what they were saying but people don't think it through and they've never experienced it you know i, I hadn't either and to be honest i didn't really understand it before it happened to me so it was well, a huge journey well even in the womb before you come a man you start off as female did that's you know very true that? yeah it's yeah. very true and there is a, there is a school of thought that thinks that the hormonal washes which uh flow over the fetus during um gestation those affect how are uh, the the gender perception and the genderness of the brain and there are there are differences there are there are numerous studies which show that say a trans woman's brain is more likely is going to be more similar to a non-trans woman's brain than it is to a man's brain so there are actually physiological differences which show that trans is a thing, uh, which also yeah. ignored by people who deny transness. But so, like, you know, you said, you said in 2017 was when you started to feel, you know, that something was different. What about when you were a child? Oh, I remember, I mean, I used to have um, Dolly's tea parties with my teddy bears. That was quite atypical for boys. Um, and I got action men because I wasn't, oh, yeah. I grew up in a, in a very sort of religious household. And it's not that I wouldn't have been allowed dollies, but there definitely would have been teasing and comments. So I got action men instead. That were, Those were my dollies. Best day for me was when I went to, there's a day in the synagogue where everyone gets dressed up in fancy dress. And I was allowed to wear one of my mom's dresses, a purple one, to dress up as a Persian emperor. Absolutely best day of my life. <laughs> I thought I looked so pretty. I went to ask yeah. my friend, my best, my friend that I fancied. I said, don't, don't you think I look pretty in this? And she said, no. <laughs> Crushing blow. But yeah, still a great day. And yeah, I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought it was just normal. I thought everyone went through this. You know, everyone, everyone yeah. must have had the thought at some point and they're like, oh, I really want to be a girl. You know, I wish I was a girl. But not everybody does, you know. So, I, I mean, I know. I, yeah, sorry, Betty. Are you still religious now? No, I, I think I, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And we, I do a few things. I keep Hanukkah because it's fun and it's fun yeah. to do with the kids. Um, we do Christmas too because my ex is uh, Christian. So they're half and half. 
but I think uh, often for me, religion gets in the way of, um, there's some very beautiful things about religion, like community and the songs and the um, traditions and food and stuff. But a lot of it, the, the spirituality gets in the way of relating to the divine, whatever that is that none of us really know. Um, and that becomes an impediment, but you know, everything's dynamic and it always, always shifting. So we'll see. I wanted to talk about Transgender Day of Remembrance as well, because I was just reading, yeah. I was just reading um, just now that apparently most of the women who are murdered, um, and it is mostly people who are murdered because they're trans. There are a few suicides, but very sadly, but it's mostly, and it's mostly sex workers. And I think this comes down to two things. One is a transphobia and the other one is a homophobia, is that straight men um, will, go with a trans woman either you know as a prostitute or in a relationship and then they will become disgusted with themselves because they feel that they're gay and then they have then the, re the result is violence and often that leads it results in murder so rather than confront your own sexuality your own gender feelings people take it out on the trans community um and it's really tragic and i think there's so much to be worked on here like especially transphobia and homophobia internalized the shame that has been applied to to gay men particularly less so to gay women but particularly to gay men as something that's disgusting and stuff like that yeah. it's still not, it's still not gone away in a large sector yeah. of society it, and i think that that is that could well be at the root of of yeah. this whole this thing anyway <laughs> it's, it's really tragic it, it, it? no you brought a good point because i facetimed my mum tonight and she's got a best friend and he phoned mum and said is is ben gay and mum went yes and i'm like mum i'm not gay i'm pansexual no, I don't know. And I said, I told you that. So, but, yeah. But, so it's very interesting because, because I said, I think we introduced the show, like my best friend of 18 years, Benny's partner now, which is lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my mum knew Jess quite well, uh, knows Jess quite well, and because she was my school friend. And when Jess transitioned, actually, my mum was asking some very open questions actually like and a lot and i think as you said it's about that conversation donna like some of the questions were very odd and strange but it's a different generation and actually it's about being open with that but at least my mum was asking questions um so that's that's what i was going to say like um in terms of your family and friends how did they react to your transition your old you're coming out um friends brilliant uh, my brother's brilliant um my ex was great but obviously for her it was an intense loss of her husband and um her partner and she's not pan and she's not lesbian so or bi so um unfortunately it was the end of the relationship so for her, it's very difficult. She did support my transition. It's just personally, it was very difficult. My parents found it really tough to remember my pronouns, to remember my new name, to take it seriously, that it's not just another thing I'm going through, even though, you know, I'm at a fairly advanced age. That I think they kind of thought related to it like a teenage kind of phase. But, you know, things have kind of leveled off now, I think. Um, I think, not sure how accepting they are of the whole trans thing or whether they're on board with the... The JK Rowling um, team turf, but that's not much I can do about that, unfortunately. So, um, you, you mentioned um, Remembrance um, Saturday. I've got the link for the Brighton um, event on Sunday. I also have the London link as well, if anyone wants to go and remember. Those who have lost their lives. I couldn't find one from my area. I found one from 
2018 and it stops so yeah that's right i was googling for it as well and i think it's quite patchy at the moment because i think um well clearly lockdown has got in the way of yeah. continuity but even before that it was it was very patchy and there is no national event that i'm aware of no. people just organize what they organize so thanks for putting the brighton one up that's brilliant it's all right i found it and thought that's going on the podcast but down below there will be links there'll um, be all the links so yeah. you can go and remember and so yes well, i think we will do something because we're together wrong we, in mark on saturday yes we are yeah so, certainly yeah. are um so how like to just just sort of change the conversation a little bit this might link into the subject area again but obviously you are a comedian so we have to ask how did you get into comedy oh well i guess yeah. i've always wanted to have a go I, I love going to comedy clubs and i was thought oh it'd be brilliant to get on stage but i probably tell my three best jokes everyone will have heard them all already and it will be a total disaster but then during lockdown i saw an advert for an online course that was like a weekend course on zoom and then on the tuesday night following you did a zoom gig and i thought oh, i could do that um so i did and it was terrible i mean well the gig course was brilliant my gig was awful yeah. <laughs> got no laughs at all best comment of the night was nice hair which you know i'll take that so but, you're you know, very new to comedy then i am oh, only... oh sorry i thought on. you was like going years oh thank you that's a lovely compliment um no i've been going a year and a half I've done, oh, I've been working yeah. it out. I've done over 100 Zoom gigs and I've done a 40 real life gigs now. That's so, amazing. Wow. That's Dude. brilliant. Just so many people I know that got into this over lockdown. And it must have been because, like, my first gig, the, the thing about it was, was it was those workshops and then the showcase. And it's always very misleading because your friends and family are there. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Then the second gig, it's like, Nope, the mic gave out halfway through and I completely died on my ass. But doing it over Zoom, doing your first gig over Zoom yeah. must it just terrifying because yeah. it's it because I know obviously stage is that kind of fear, but doing it online is a whole different kind of fear. It's like how do you sort of what sort of difference do you see between online and stage? What have you found as a newer comic? With that well i mean the, the one thing obviously that's hard to to work with is if on zoom you don't always have a lot of people with with the cameras on I mean, i found there was one gig i was playing i, I played to the, about the one audience member who had the camera on and i tried my hardest to make a laugh or smile i couldn't nothing I, I i did was working it was only after i got off stage and another couple of acts had been on um i realized that, that wasn't actually her camera that was her profile picture oh no <laughs> I've been so trying to make no, a profile picture no, laugh. <laughs> no one had their cameras on. Only the, only the comedians. So it was no, really I hate that. But, but do um, you think it made you better for when you did your very first real gig out in the wide world? Oh, oh god yeah benny i mean it, it's yeah. it's night it, because all of those zoom gigs you get to hone your material you find out what works what doesn't yeah. which of your material is the funniest bits and then you keep that and you develop another five minutes and you try that and you pick another gag that was works really well so you can build something that works really well so it's yeah. a really great testing ground the thing is you do have to wait an extra few seconds for the laugh yeah. and be prepared that there might not be one and then you've got to cover yeah. that so yeah. Learning to uh, be comfortable enough with not getting a laugh and to have um, rescue lines ready if things get, don't get the laughs you're expecting, that takes a bit of time to work up to. So yeah. and unless you leave the pauses, you're not going to get the laughs. Simple as yeah. that. Well, I, I remember, I think you did Laugh Able online, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I actually, yeah, how many gigs were you into when you did that particular one? Or I will check. I will check just now. I mean, you don't have to be top of your head, but like, yeah, it doesn't have to be exact figure. But you were really good then that night, I have to say. 
Thank felt you. like you were estab establishing. Thank you very much. Um, Jim Jam gig with Laugh Able. Mm -hmm. That was my 116th gig. So I was quite a way in then. Oh, yeah, and wow. I, 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 do you know what? I felt like I could tell that you were establishing yourself and it was really great to see and great to hear that progression online because a lot of comedians shit on online gigs and I never understand it. Benny never understands it because online saved us, didn't it? it, it saved a lot of well, we've got a better relationship now because of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's made yeah. our careers. Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, I just want to ask you this question. I found it on YouTube. I'm sorry if I read it wrong, but here we go. What does trans joy mean to you? Ooh, I've, not, I've not heard that term before, but I, I have got to say that moment of realizing who you are, which I've heard yeah. referred to as coming in, um, is unbelievable. It's like because you, you kind of sense that something's been a bit something's off your whole life. People say, Are you yeah. sure you're not gay? I'm like, Well, I don't know, maybe I am, but um, you know, I've never been attracted that way before, so I don't really think it was, but something was a bit. You know, and then suddenly you realise who you are. Like, oh my God, that's who I am. I'm a woman, and it's like, wow. So that joy in that moment, and it was just like simple things, like dressing up nicely, doing makeup, looking nice, getting compliments. It's nice. It is lovely. It's just being myself. And yeah, it takes. You asked me earlier, like, what was the journey like? The journey was really awkward. First time you go out, it's, it's horrendous. Every, you, of course, you look like a, a bloke in a dress, and that's how everyone stares. And you know, it's just really difficult. But you do let. So you learn really gradually how to do your hair. Probably get a wig. Most people do. Um, get raid charity shops are brilliant because you can get so many different outfits for. for Next Definitely. to nothing, you can get part used makeup for next to nothing, which then you can then experiment with. You can find out what works for you, mm. all those sorts of things. I mean, my, my poor kids they had to go out with me in the early days. My eldest would walk like three yards in front and hope people didn't think she was associated with me. <laughs> I mean, uh, do you still get misgendered when you go out now? I do sometimes. And how do you um, deal with it? I just say if they say Matt, Miss or Ma'am, I just say uh, if they say you know Mister or or Sir, I just say Madam and leave it at that. And if just as a matter of fact, I don't really get annoyed by it anymore. And if they say Oh, sorry, if they get, I'm like, No, it's fine. It's confusing. No problem. Um, because I do have quite a male voice still, and uh, movement. You can you can look. You know, you can do your makeup. You can wear the right clothes. You can fit in. But movement, it, there's no natural hip sway. And people pick up these things, like, subconsciously. Apparently, children of what age, 18 months or younger? Is it 10 months can tell male from female based on really? structure and uh, <laughs> tone of wow. voice. So there's a lot you've got to work on. I've done 12 sessions of voice coaching, so I cannot pass as female on the phone, which is quite useful. People used to ask me, Donna, how do you spell Donna? <laughs> it's the single most common name in the year I was born. How, how else are you going to spell Donna? <laughs> but yeah. they were just so confused. They couldn't work it out. A bloke sounds like a bloke. Name called Donna does not compute. So that's been good. Voice coaching has been brilliant. Um, so the particular course you go on, just for people who are like, trying to learn that at the moment. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there, there are some specialised voice therapists who do that. Um, I went to one in London, uh, but there are there's some across the country. If you if you manage to get yourself to the head of the queue in the NHS and get some treatment, you can get that on the NHS. It's one of the things you I, can get. Again, you've just brought us to the perfect topic, bloody NHS. Why now? They should have realised that, that we need to help these people. But no, there's only 
four or five big doctors in the UK and the rest you have to buy this stuff online. And I bet that is quite risky, isn't it? It is, and I would re wouldn't recommend anybody does that because you risk um, seriously damaging your internal organs if you get the dosage wrong. So right. what I recommend, if 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 this is you and you're in a situation, go and talk to your GP. Say, listen, I'm trans. Um, I don't want to self medicate. What are my options? Um, uh, there are various different ways of. You can go private. There's gender GP. There's a couple of places you can go private for a diagnosis to get a prescription. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a great doctor they should uh, arrange your blood tests for you. If not, you might want to look around. You can always move your your um, your doctor. Uh, you're yeah. always free to do that. Some doctors are much more friendly than others about trans issues. You can get yourself um, referred from your GP to an endocrinologist, and they should actually do that if you ask them. So if they're not doing that, you could complain to your practice manager or you could move doctors. And then once you've got seen by an endocrinologist, you could get prescribed hormones. So there are there are routes in, uh, available that people don't really know about. But the fact that you have to do this is really scandalous. I mean, I, when I joined the waiting list in lo the Laurels in Exeter, which is one of the gender clinics, they told me they were seeing cases from two years ago. They would never say your wait time is this. They said, we're seeing cases from two years ago. I thought, okay, fine. Well, I've got a good chance of being seen in two years. Two years later, they said, we're seeing cases from two years ago, or from four years ago. I was like, wait, what? I've not moved at all. So I had to move to London, go to the back of the queue again. It's been crazy. And it's not it's not atypical. There's waiting times of five years at some clinics just to get a first appointment. And then they go, okay, well, well you'll see someone else in 18 months. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy um, so there's two things that happened quite recently which people might be aware of there's that famous case of someone who regretted their transition uh, which she did as a, a minor um on her own like her own um, what's the word where you give authority to give for medical procedures and it's a well-known thing children who are old enough to understand the consequences of any medical procedure they, they would undergo can give their own consent without parental consent she did um they did i'm not can't remember what, which way the gender change went but they transitioned and then regretted it and transitioned back and then they sued the nhs for not stopping them uh won the case the next day the nhs changed all the rules and made it impossible for anyone to get any hormone blockers so for the one in 20 who regret their transition 19 young people have to go endure the wrong puberty it, it's heartbreaking any case, um, they took it to the Court of Appeal, won the appeal, and the NHS didn't change a thing. So now the NHS are being taken to court by the Good Law Project um, for their total and utter failure to provide any sort of service within the, their charter, which is 18 weeks, I believe, to provide a, um, something. Jeez. So that, that's the good news. There's another bit of good news, and that is in Wales, they are trialling, allowing GPs to prescribe hormones to trans people directly. Um, that's amazing. Isn't it? Uh, it's not, it's not rocket know. science. GPs prescribe HRT, hormone replacement therapy, to women all the time. They know they, exactly what blood tests to do. They know what dosages to prescribe. Yeah. It's completely available online. Yeah, they can look it up. It's not hard. So if this goes well and if, if there's an enlightened backing of thinking in the NHS, hopefully that will roll out across the UK and then... Because, you know, the impact on trans people of not being able to access medicines that will help with their transition yeah. is huge. It's so depressing. Yeah. Honestly, I've never felt suicidal in my life. But the moment that the, um, the clinic told me I was still exactly the same place in the queue that I was when I started, I, that I did. Honest, for one second, I thought I just lost the will to live. I literally did. Um, they, I'm lucky. I've got I can go private. I can't, I can afford it, yeah. but there's loads and loads and loads of people who can't. And no. it's, it's truly, it's terrible. It's a scandal. I, I mean, if they can give me testosterone for my condition, <laughs> they can yeah. give women who's transitioning to men the same. Come on, guys. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I know, I know we've got a shitty government, but it, 
Yeah. It's yeah. We would say so. As you said, it's not lives. rocket science. It's just regular no. science. We, <laughs> we, we would save so many lives if we did things properly. In my and, book. We, we would like, because the statistics about the number of trans people who attempt suicide is horrendous. I mean, it's not obviously it's not just because of lack of medical treatment, it's also right. because of bullying and lack of acceptance in yeah. society. But um, there is a big part of it, and and it would help to reduce um, that. It would help to reduce depression and other mental issues that trans people suffer from because they can't get proper treatment. Um, yeah, it's just it would it would be brilliant. It would be brilliant. And it's not a funding, it's not even a funding issue. Hormones are cheap. Going to see your GP is cheap. People see their GP all the time for all sorts of things. The alternative, which we currently have, which is you've got to go to a gender clinic, see a psychiatrist, a psychologist, all that, that's really expensive. So we could save really? whole packets of money by stopping doing that and do it via the GP. And, and, and do you know what? I think what I'm really fascinated by this conversation, you're dispelling a lot of myths that, oh, it'd be really expensive to do this. Too. And it's not. It's really a simple case of hormones are really cheap. It's, they're very accessible. We just need to implement it. Um, but you talked about, you know, the sort of your mental health struggles with this. What? How's your support network been? Like what type of support? in terms of whether it's friends or family or other support services to your access to help get you through the tougher times? Um, well, there's been obviously, you know, friends, colleagues who are supportive, family members. I have a therapist that I see once a month who's been brilliant. So I can see him more if I need to. But there's also helplines. There's one in the southwest that I'm struggling to remember the name of but they are brilliant and they will talk to you on their helpline they have time which is really rare and they understand and they can even arrange um a kind of a visit by somebody if that's what you like uh and there are lgbt helplines that you can call if you need to sorry you got yeah again all of these helplines will be in the description yeah if you, if, you, if we you know maybe yeah. we'll look it up after we'll put a load yeah. of links to them so yeah. yeah they will all be there for people who want help and support or get in touch and we will try and help you that way that's brilliant. I've just found the, the, the link. I mean, it's it's intercom, the Intercom Trust and the helpline is 0800 612 3010. But it's the Intercom right. Trust. If you, Google that. If you that's, send that's, me, that's Southwest only. Yeah, well, send me that link as well. And I will get the London one and the Nottingham and the North if I can. Yeah. Cool. So. Well, we need to wrap this up, but we've oh, well, got, you've got a few questions. Go on, because I was going down the questions, but go on. No, I asked the last question, so you can ask the next one. Uh, right. I love it when boys fight over me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you oh. go. You're very, you're very lucky. Um, yeah. Now, this one is quite interesting because I know I can't get it. So, have you got life insurance or because you're trans, that are is you a... finding it hard to get it? That's a very good question. Luckily, I took out life insurance years ago because I bought a house with my um, then wife. And we, a condition of getting the mortgage was to get life insurance. And it's lucky because as you get older, the price of the insurance, her life insurance gets much more expensive. So that's stood us in good stead. But I did have a problem with getting um, uh, income protection because I'm a contractor right. in the, in the uh, computer industry. We oh. often get, think of income protection so that if we were um, had a critical illness or, um, or died, then we would get paid out um, you know, to cover the salary that the, the money we would have earned, except we couldn't. And I got refused because I was go because they said I had said I was going to have surgeries in the in the sort of next few years, but I wasn't sure when. And I said, but that that I complained, and I said, but well, that means you're never going to um, 
insure any trans person ever. So that's discriminatory. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, and they, they they thought about it and they thought about it and they said, well, as a goodwill gesture, we'll let you take out the policy. And obviously as we won't. As a goodwill gesture. I know. So they covered really... themselves, right? They but, you know, they, they said, obviously, obviously, <laughs> obviously anything trans related is excluded. I said, fine. I never asked you to include anything trans related, you know, but um there are some, you know, Booper, I think, do a policy that does include, will, will allow you to get uh, surgeries on, on private, but only on a corporate policy. So if you're lucky enough to have a job that would include Booper cover, um, have a look into that and ask if it does include um, trans stuff, because you might get hormones Did and surgeries. Did you say you work in gaming or computers? Um, I work in software design. So, yeah, computers. All right, so on the 10th of um, December, when you meet my partner, you'll be talking about that because she is a computer science, scientist. scientist so, yeah. yeah. I'm very yeah. sorry to hear that, Benny. Um, it's the one thing I hate actually talking about is computers. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> it's so boring. It's bad enough working in it, right, without having I've to talk got, about it. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting your partner anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think what's good about her is I think she explains it in layman's terms for me and Benny. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, a couple of light heart questions to finish with. Um, we we always have to ask this question because our other co-host, Kate Lovelock, insists on it. We sure. are changing it, apparently, but go on. Well, it's, it's, it's a lot. I'm just reading the script, Benny. You yeah, said, on, get on with it. <laughs> See, now with you're it. seeing the cracks start to form, Donna, in our <laughs> little comedy manage here. <laughs> uh, uh, always, darling, always. Uh, so, so our co-host, Kate Lovelock, always asks this and always asks us to ask this. Yeah. A very, very good question, I think. What is your favourite biscuit? <laughs> My favorite biscuit. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite biscuit. Can I say honey cake? Is that or is that allowed? That's honey a cake. cake. It's a cake, cake. a biscuit. Mm, tricky. Ooh. I do like a good chocolate digestive. I can't say. Ooh, yeah. You good mm. choice. Well, it's funny enough. Kate's favorite one is uh Bourbons, and she was with us at the weekend. But I've stolen hers. So no, I'm gonna tell her. I'm gonna so yeah, if you want your bourbons, Kate. <laughs> um, but chocolate digest is a good choice. Anytime anyone says Jaffa cakes, there's always that debate about whether Jaffa cakes a biscuit or a cake. But apparently the definition is if it goes if it goes hard when it's stale, it's a cake. If it goes soft when it's stale, it's a biscuit. Hmm. I never knew that. And there was a huge court case recently because it affects the tax, which is paid on Jaffa cakes, doesn't it? Yes, it or does. Not. Crazy, crazy. And another high, um, question, if you was prime minister, what Ooh. would you change? Oh, my God. Well, I think first thing I do is take all the tax off booze. Yay! So. Yay! <laughs> Cheers, sponsored by <laughs> I also think we should not tax cigarettes or petrol. But, and, and I know that's controversial because cigarettes damage health so badly that you end up with people in the NHS. Um, but it's a tax that affects poor people um, disproportionately because poor people are more likely to smoke and cigarettes are more likely to be a higher proportion of their income. So it's really unfair. And also the same thing with petrol is, you know, we've all got to get around. We've all got to get to our jobs and uh, again someone who doesn't earn as much their fuel cost is going to be a higher proportion of their total income than it will be of someone who's um who earns more so it's it, again disproportionate tax on poor people and i find that as really unfair so i change those things obviously i'd make trans life much easier um what else would i do gosh all that power yeah, all that power i think I, I think we need to refocus really on on in improving national happiness gross national happiness rather than looking at gross national product because you can have as much stuff in the world as you like and still be miserable as sin and you can have very little and be happy so 
that would be great if we could have the therapy available for everybody because I think we could all use a bit of therapy. We all had stuff going on when we were growing up. That would be really helpful if we could have, you know, meditation and yoga and everything available, alternative therapies. Life would become so much easier, wouldn't it? Just smoking, drinking, trans rights, um, therapy. I'm signed up yeah. to this, Donna. I'll go the next in the US the next five yeah, minutes. I'm so in Donna. Except the smoking, I, I, I don't smoke, yeah. but the drinking I can get on board with. Do you, <laughs> know, do you know what we forgot to play? Yes. Jamie's gaming. Do we ever have a little bit of time? We've got... Ten minutes. I've only yes, got one, and I think Donna knows this one. But you know the Jamie's gaming. I think I do. Know? It does ring a bell. Is our friend Jamie uses a communication? Oh room. yes, that's it. And you have to guess what Jamie's saying. So. You might know this one, so what, let me put you to the top, and we will block Mark's face. There we go. Always happens. Yeah. <laughs> so what is Jamie saying? Uh, Very gosh, exercise. Is it exercise? No. Sport? Um, I need to forgot this. On the ball. Oh, nearly on the button. What? On the spot. No. What's the last symbol? Have a look at that. What are they the doing last symbol that? is bike. Cycle. Yeah. Oh no, it's get on. Uh, get on. Get Ooh. on your bike. Get yeah. on your bike. Get on your oh. bike. Oh, I see. Get on your bike. Got you. Okay. And there we go. Is, uh, Fantastic. And you've Brilliant. got a busy week. Well, you've just had a busy week. You're in um, Nottingham Comedy Festival, aren't you? I am. I'm doing a split bill with um, Fedor Ikla in a show called Mr. and Misfits. So 2.30 we on uh, November the uh, 21st. There you go. At the carousel yeah. in Nottingham. Really looking forward to it. It's the first time I've done a half hour, so it should be a lot of fun. Come along. It's only five. Yeah. So come along for a lot, good laugh and um, a really great hour. Cool. And after that, I've got I've got a show in London on the Tuesday, the twenty third, in Soho called Crazy <sighs> Funny. I'm doing Extra Phoenix on Friday, and uh, Fast, Fresh, and Dirty Comedy in Bristol on Sunday, the twenty eighth. So it's oh, all going. Wow. It's okay. I will and uh, your me. socials, if they can, f how how will people be able to find out what you're doing? I know we're promoting it, but how can people follow you? And you know, on follow me on Facebook. Um, I'm Posh Tranny on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also YouTube. I don't do a lot on YouTube at the moment, to be fair. But yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Posh Tranny will help you find my pages, or you can look me up at Donna Landy Comedy on Facebook. So that will help you find all my gigs. So, yeah, look forward to that. And if you can use these hashtags when you're sharing this video, that would be great. great. Yeah. So we've got hashtag transgender, hashtag two crips one cam and the hashtag shaky news see shaky news that's a new one i haven't come across no before. it's old i've Is been it old? It for ages oh maybe yeah. i have a look at shaky news and if you want to buy donna needs lots of pints of tequila yeah. apparently yeah. so it's going to cost more than a fiver, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, 10 quid or 20 would be grand. And a grand would be also... <laughs> a grand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Anyway. I would feel... I, I, one thing I've got, to, I've got to mention for my, my policy platform, and that is we have to, have to, have to reform support for disabled people, unemployed people, 
and the arts. I think the way that disabled and unemployed people are treated is really shameful. The people who make the rules have never been unemployed or disabled. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is absolutely unconscionable. It's outrageous. And the arts needs a lot more support because it enriches yeah. our culture and we really do need to support that. So there you go. If you weren't already voting for me, please do vote for me now. Uh, <laughs> well, the lad, I'll be standing party. for the bring a bottle party. Bring, I love it. Bring a bottle. <laughs> Hang on, you bab. Bring a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That could the perfect acronym. Anyone would. Anyway, thank you for coming, Donna. Thank you very um, much. Son. It's been a very enlightening uh, hour. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, guys. Lovely to be here. Um, look yeah. forward to meeting you in person in Nottingham. Yes, all on the tenth of December in yes. Elford. Yes, in Ilford, yeah, and um, once I get the posters, I will put that all yeah. out because Donna will be performing at La Fable Comedy Night in Ilford on the 10th of December at Redwood Central Library. So, yeah. but don't go away, I'm just gonna end the recording. I haven't got the end credits yet, but there will be by. Friday, so just and, uh, before, before we end it, you want to follow Benny. Benny shakes things up. Follow me at Mark Nicholas Co M Nicholas Comic on Twitter, Mark Nicholas on Insta and Facebook, and yeah, and follow the podcast. Yeah, Benny shakes things up, and just keep sharing and stay safe. So. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all we have time for tonight from Benny and the gang. Please remember to subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications on the next instalment of Benny Shakes Things Up. If you want to support the podcast or you like the jingle from Leicester in Nottingham, please click on the links below. Adios, amigos.